uh, this moment in my life, I'm living in Chile. Uh, I am from Chile, and but now I consider myself to be a citizen of the world. <laughs> and uh, I used to live in the United States for 10 years, which helped me to understand other cultures and other perspective of my career. I studied chemical engineer, so by default, I'm a chemical engineer. And when I moved to the United States, I had to do different things, you know? English was not my first language. So I started to doing, working in different things that allowed me to you know, um, improve my English. I started being as a telecommunication engineer and it was very fantastic. You know, I was, I felt like I was in a dream that I wanted to reach other things in other areas. Product manager for a telecommunication company, then project manager, and then I start escalating, as you can tell, <laughs> which really motivated me, really uh, liked me was to be a product manager because I had to, connect people from different areas. And then I have to challenge myself constantly with the um, technology and uh, mainly bringing back together people with soft skills that, you know, we used to call, that I call today smart skills <laughs> because connect us and give us the opportunity to listen to each other. So that was great. Then I moved back to Chile um, and I started working for a, comp uh, for a company, an engineer company. Over there, I had the beautiful opportunity to, um, to connect with the learning. So I was in charge for learning corporation and I was developing leaders around the world for our 300 uh, leaders around the globe. This company was very big. It was the main uh, Canadian company. Probably my engineer degree helped me to observe and analyze what was broken, what was needed for that opportunity. And I became with this prototype of developing the capacities of the leaders to, to be more um, productive, but also to also be more happy. <laughs> and the lack of this was always lack of communication, lack of motivation. So that really uh, brought my attention to how can we put some engineering in this and develop high performance teams but also more balanced teams with life with family and also serving other other uh, members of our communities in the project which are very big so um, that i said that was my laboratory before i became uh, um, independent today i'm independent i'm a consultant and management consulting and in that area i think i put all the best pieces of world you know, theory you, um, transforming ourselves to, to our best um, version to be able to serve the planet and together learn how is this unfolding, you know, because it's uh, so uncertain and changes all around us, but definitely for for the opportunity to, um, to be a better person that we can contribute to what's needed from us. Remember that I told you that I was uh, I was in lack of I felt that I was, we were like these big communities of uh, engineers working together. We were somehow losing the um, the soul, <laughs> working a lot of hours <clears throat> in these projects, burning ourselves in that sense, but without a purpose or common purpose or, or, or even even a more enlightened uh, purpose. So what I what I start putting in this uh, <laughs> in this uh, prototype that I mentioned to you was to bring in together our groups and then just having conversations and maybe caring about other spaces. For example, for the young professionals, uh, we developed a program that was two years long. Early in these days was the idea to Okay, you guys are professionals, you have a lot of talents that you're going to put to serve to others. And at the beginning, they didn't quite understood this. But when we start moving into these areas of helping, you know, uh, older people or helping kids, you know, on the street or um, hospice and then bringing our talents, you know, into these uh, spaces, um, that people start sensing and feeling how important it was to, to, to be there for others, you know? So it was not only the professional side, but we 
at the very end, we start measuring how the productivity start raising because we were caring about others. We have a common purpose. So definitely that was a good, good idea to, to start, you know, navigating in those areas. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Uh, I learned this by observing <laughs> my my grandmother, my mother. Uh, they were all coming from this. Uh, a lot of contributions to the to the society. Uh, definitely, for example, my my mother. She's eighty two years old now, and she's still very active. You know, as a the Red Cross, and she always uh, you know is helping others and bringing this. Uh, she developed a program for to to develop the ethic <laughs> and the Red Cross here in Chile. So that was very interesting. And I see her so I I see her so very active. And then she definitely is one of my role models. And my grandmother's as well. My ma- my grandmother from the my father's side was uh, coming from Spain. You know, <clears throat> she was uh, from Spain, and then she took off. Uh, with little baby was my father, <laughs> all the way to this unknown country called Chile, <laughs> and she was such a great and lovable person. And you just see her walk and then helping others, and then always being so active in the community. So you, I'm, I'm assuming that you know, as a little kid, you learn this, you see this, and you take it as so natural. So passing those values into the next coming, and I see now my kids <laughs> that they're like with their profession, but also being you know a very great support to the humanity. Yeah, I definitely consider myself to be a woman of action. <laughs> so when I sense something, I just put my hands on. For example, um, 2014. I was, in, I was involved in this um, community of doctors and people with uh, hepatitis, hepatitis C. And then at that point of life, I, I saw myself like seeing, saw, seeing this light coming down. <laughs> it was all these sick people. Among them, were my, it was my father and then specialist of this uh, illness that was, you know, killing a lot of people here in Chile. And then um, I understood that that was the right moment to take action because it was not only have one father, but at that moment, I have 50,000 parents that they were in the same situation. So I said to the doctor, OK, I, I can do what I do the best is like to manage this and, and then be able to support and help this community to build this community and then uh, formalize this uh, foundation. And then in two years, my dear friend, we just changed the course of these people. And not only of these people, but we were able to, to bring this last minute medication. It was, uh, you know, it was curing people. Uh, instead of before, it was like people was having this, um, it was almost like a cancer treatment, but didn't have any good response. So we were able to change the law here in Chile. We were able to connect the health uh, minister here in Chile with the doctors, with the patients, with their families. So we built this ecosystem <laughs> that it was beautiful because we start working together. Even, you know, at the very end, well, um, it was a very expensive treatment, but we br- brought it back to that the government was paying for this. So it's a very good example of how can we put our, our ideas and our dreams into actions and be able to help others. So that I really like. And of course, we, as we were growing and, and, and doing this program, we were able to understand that we need to connect and we need to help others to, to be, you know, to make this world a better place. Uh, I'm working also now in parallel with this group of people that is in Tanzania. <laughs> so that's the beauty about now being, you know, uh, global in the world and being able to connect. And uh, as management consultant, we start learning from each other. And in opening to this space that it's, that you're able to learn together, because you're not here to tell what it needs to be happening. So just uh, just by opening your heart and saying, okay, let's sense what's coming in this future together and then we understood from each other they're like natural so there's a beautiful community a college in Tanzania that have this humongous <laughs> financial crisis so we started you know listening to each other and then putting together some uh, potential 
help for them. And then we grow so much. And then we consider ourselves, you know, three months later in a community, like a family. So feeling that, that we are bound uh, boundary less, how do you say, how do you say that? <laughs> without boundaries, <laughs> uh, and then you feel and you connect, kind of like it's a, it's a call for, for action. Yeah, I remember a couple of times, uh, my first year of uh, working as an engineer, I was working for this North American company. Uh, then we were developing adhesives, you know, for, for the industrial world and everything. And I remember that once I was in charge of uh, putting these two tons of product being sent to the client for the next days. And I was, you know, testing the product. It was not reaching the, the um, characteristics of the product that we were selling. And this was my first year. <laughs> and I remember saying, OK, I'm not going to approve this, you know, because it's not coming with the, the specifications required for this pro project, for this product. And then the, my boss called me, he said, Monica, you need to approve this because this is in a rush. The client is waiting for us. And I said, no, I can't. I mean, I cannot do this. And then the general manager of the company came and talked to me. And I said, you know, if you want to prove it, go ahead. But I'm not going to sign for this because we're going to be, we will be lying to the client. And as a matter of fact, if we send this, we can have a, you know, a huge impact. Uh, so I decided not to approve. And then the manager was very upset and he approved it. <laughs> but it was not with my uh, blessings. <laughs> you know, a month later, the problem came back because, of course, was not reaching the quality and, and, and the specifications and everything. And I felt so proud that, you know, even in my young days, I didn't... Um, they didn't force me to say, okay, I can, you know, let me know, let me go if I need to go, but I'm not going to go uh, on this path. And I remember another part, another time also <laughs> that I was uh, as a, I was a product manager and then a big telecommunication in the United States. And then um, I took, I don't know if you, you're too young to remember this, but <laughs> I was the, man the product manager for voice over IP just launching in this big dot coms. And at that time, um, I, I became the product manager for this voice over IP. And then I started studying, you know, what, what what's going on with this product in the industrial way. And then I discovered that this product was not being factored. No, it was not, nobody was paying for this because the client wasn't paying, it was a big zoo. And then I said, okay, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm clear enough, am I honest enough, uh, this product, probably need to be retired or reinvent in the, in the market, but as well, my, my position is going to go away. <laughs> and I say, okay, we know with this, given this clarity and this, uh, uh, this uh, analysis of this, I'm also, you know, bringing my, my title <laughs> with me because, I mean, if the product disappears, I'm also going to disappear. So I was that uh, important, the decision. And, but I said, okay, well, we're just going to move. We need, uh, I need to be very honest and very clear with this. What was around the 2000 was, you know, the dot-com were starting to disappear or changing around the world. But, you know, they, they, they were very I mean, happy that, that I was very quite honest with them. And then they moved me to another position. So definitely uh, being, bring your values, uh, bringing your values into your actions based in the long run. And as of also your, your soul uh, recognize what you need to do, what you need to say. I consider myself to be very positive and uh, I definitely see for the last two years that we've been locked in our homes, in our countries, in our spaces, I think we'll learn a lot. I've learned so far that um, the balances in life is very relevant. You know, just being a professional, but also being a mother, being, you know, yourself, taking care of yourself and also take care of the family and also bringing some uh, hope and, and gathering to building these communities. It's like a propeller that I always call myself. Uh, I, I didn't see, you know, sea level quite for a long time. And uh, teach them this balance in these four areas is, is remarkable. Because you picture yourself as, oh my God, I'm just putting all myself in the professional area. And this propeller is going to go nowhere with no balance. But you start, you know, developing areas like 
take care of yourself, you know, connect with your best version, then also be a good professional, the best professional that you can be, putting all your talents and your passion into what you do makes a difference. And in the family also, you know, be, don't forget that we work to live, not live to work. <laughs> and then with all this energy to put together for these programs, for these spaces to grow common communities around, uh, it makes this very balanced. So definitely uh, I see a future that it's, uh, it's more human, it's more connected, we're more united, uh, and that we discover somehow that we are here to serve each other, and then why not to love each other? Definitely. Uh, we've been discussing a lot about diversity and equity and this meaningful conversation that we host uh, around our communities. And definitely bringing your feminine side to this leadership is so important. I guess I saw myself, you know, scaling up in the professional area and then you start to mimic, you know, even dressing up like a, like a boy. <laughs> but we shouldn't be doing that because ourselves, you know, bringing the feminine side, the maternal side of, on, on this leadership that we bring us together, we talk about uh, relevant matters and that you care about each other. It's, it's the way that the humanity needs uh, to, to act now. Um, not just copying other leaders that are like very mandatory or not listening or like very um, masculine. We need to integrate. When we're talking about the balance, I will say also it's very relevant to, to integrate the feminine side and the masculine side. One, you know, requires to, to be more um, um, productive, but the other side also brings you more into a happiness. So the yin and the yang. <laughs> As a Latina moving into the United States, <laughs> um, even though I was very integrating with the, the North American um, society, I also have a lot of friends, you know, and Latinos. And for, for, for them, was the, why good things always happen in English? <laughs> so I said to myself, well, let's bring this into our, you know, in our community that the Spanish, that probably some of them don't speak English. So let's bring this beautiful EBBF. When I, when I, um, Met the community, I fell in love with EBBF. <laughs> and I'm, as you can tell, I'm very passionate. <laughs> and then once I think I need to go in that route, I'll just take that route and I'll go. <laughs> putting all these values, putting all this uh, methodology or way to live in trust and, and hope and everything into a building, into a um, the, um, business, that's my dream. I really need to be there. I mean, I was born to do this <laughs> because, you know, you, you put all this professional side and now we need to bring some, the soul of the organizations and the teams. And I felt that this is really needed. And then not only to just separate the EBBF Hispanic from the rest of the world, the idea is to bring them and then embrace them all and become a one big family of EBBF. So that the language now needs to be definitely a stopper. For, to knowing what's EBBF doing around the world and this beautiful, meaningful conversation spaces to together build the future. It, it's like a dream for, I mean, just knowing and observing how the world is today with lots of lack of uh, trust, lack of values, or lack of, uh, or maybe more, more even like, um, moving into the fear area, knowing that it's a community, that it's, you know, think alike, um, that we have this, uh, the same um, way to look the future, that we are together in this space of trust. It's like, almost feels like a, um, being in a, in a space that you can grow, that everything is, you know, set up for success. And then expanding this into the world, that, that's my dream, because that's we definitely what humanity needs, a more human space that we can trust each other, that we can understand that if someone, in, someone needs, uh, you know, uh, something that probably we don't even appreciate or we, we can give away, it's just a beautiful space to, to help each other.
feel uh, that the the young professionals these days are very conscious <laughs> by nature. They're more uh, caring about the planet, being more sustainable. They they don't make differences between you know different peoples or or ethnicities or that I've been learning a lot from my young professional, <laughs> from my my kids and the young professional there. But somehow I do feel also that the the youngs they, they they we need to connect some more. They, I, I I picture myself also being the connector of you know the elder people with the youngest one so we can learn from each other. Just like the spaces that we have in EBPF, that just the spaces that we have with this we can learn together. I'm not gonna, you know, um, um, label you if you're like older or you cannot support me because I'm a young professional and, and you know, you don't understand me. So bringing together this potential of working together and learning together, it's just a beautiful, another beautiful probably and keeping the balance. <laughs> uh, good question. I will say uh, to my young Monica, don't be afraid, you know, don't be afraid. Just somehow connect with your mission in life and just trust God that all the the people's going to, you know, join and the things that you need to accomplish, you will accomplish. And then you'll find this beautiful community. So don't be afraid. So um, meet them earlier. I wish that I would meet you like, you know, 20 years earlier. EBBF or the Baha'i community, which I think helps you to develop your virtues, your values, but not only that, and not in a selfish way, but to prepare you to be serving to our community, to our humanity. So I think that's so powerful. That's so beautiful. And I'll say to Monica, you know, just go ahead, <laughs> travel more, love more, and build more communities around the world. <laughs> that would be my my advice to this young Monica. I would like to meet all the EBBF members, so I'm that so, so happy to that I'm going to be physically connected because one thing is Zoom and everything, but you know, in order to build high performance teams, connectivity is key. And I know we can be connected through the, the virtual uh, world, <laughs> but being together is going to help us to potentiate uh, this energy. And then I'm sure that if I normally in a Zoom call, I, uh, you know, committed to do two things, over there I'm going to be committed to, you know, probably to 10 more <laughs> meaningful ways to connect each other. So that's going to be wonderful. So I invite all of them to be part of this beautiful space that we're going to have together, bringing people from different countries, from different ethnicities and everything. So I'm very looking forward for that space. And thank you so much for putting all this together. EBBF is uh, bringing the whole world together. EBBF is unity for good. <laughs>